Okay, <clears throat> so um, uh, today is the 9th of January, 2022. And today, Massimiliano Fuxas is 78 years old. Let's wish, let's wish him happy birthday uh, from Bucharest, Romania. And uh, let's hope that uh, this presentation on his works uh, will, uh, will uh, have some relevance for those who love architecture. So Massimiliano Fuxas was born on January 9th, 1944 is an Italian Lithuanian architect. He is the head of Studio Fuxas in partnership with his wife, that is his second wife, Doriana Mandrelli Fuxas, with offices in Rome, Paris, and Shenzhen. Uh, this is quite a, an addition, you know, Shenzhen. Who would have thought 30 years ago that a Chinese city would, uh, would uh, uh, you know, receive offices from such architects from the West? But it happened, and it, 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 at this point, as we know, China is the great laboratory of um, innovative, creative architecture. Bravo to them. So Fuxas was born in Rome in 1944. His father was Lithuanian Jewish, while his Catholic mother was the daughter of a French father and an Austrian mother. Interesting uh, background. At the beginning of the 1960s, Another interesting thing, he worked for Giorgio de Chirico in Rome, the great surrealist uh, uh, painter. Although in his later works, uh, Giorgio de Chirico was um, changed. He, he wasn't any longer so-called uh, a surrealist. Um, an interesting change. Anyway, after he left Italy, he worked for a period for Archigram in London, for Henning Larsen and for John Woodson in Copenhagen. Not bad. He received his degree in architecture from the La Sapienza University in 1969 in Rome, where he opened his first office in 1967. So he opened his office before he finalized his studies, formal studies. The grandma, that's how he called his first office, collaborating with his first wife, Anna Maria Sacconi. And now they run, Massimiliano and Doriana, they run, run together Studio Fuxas. And here she is, um, an interesting uh, lady. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I imagine uh, that uh, their partnership is a, is a very, very fruitful one. Uh, here he is. Hello, Mr. Fuxas. Happy birthday to you today. Here they are together, uh, and uh, yeah, um, it helps when you find the right partner, it does help. And I do think she has a, a, a good influence, perhaps not just on their architecture um, the practice, but also on him, it's possible. Because I remember at the early 90s when I attended the lecture by him in New York, he, he said, I fight a lot. And I imagine at that time, at least, he did have some inner demons, so to speak. And uh, some of those demons we are going to contemplate or see in his very first works, but also in his uh, very tempestuous and chromatically uh, wild uh, um, drawings, preliminary sketches, uh, painting like that he always often makes um, uh, prior to conceiving an architecture project. Here they are again. Uh, she's always very elegant. Uh, well, Italians are in general elegant. Of course, his uh, man uh, is a little bit uh, more subdued. A little bit, they are friends with Giorgio Armani. Uh, and uh, they re received commissions from Giorgio Armani. So, not bad, but this is not his first wife. Uh, this is Toyo Ito on the right. Uh, interesting picture, you know, Fuxas and Toyo Ito, two very important architects for our uh, time. Um, yeah, I wonder what, uh, 
what Toyo Ito was, uh, was thinking when he thought of, um, you know, letting himself uh, being pictured in this way. 1985 building, I will show, uh, there is one, one that I do not show and I regret, uh, but um, I, I, I show uh, two other things that will probably surprise. You. So 1985 was already, you know, uh, the time of postmodernism. And this gentleman, uh, Massimiliano Fuxas, he uh, instinctually probably uh, felt like um, uh, protesting against the melodrama of historicism. And he found a, an interesting and rather unusual way of uh, protesting. So Palestra di Paliano, the first building I'm going to show, which is a, which is a sport facility. It's a, it's a sports, um, you know, hall, uh, an arena, but look at the main elevation. Can you imagine that uh, someone paid for this? Yes, someone did pay for this. And uh, someone else proposed it and built it. And that is Massimiliano Fuxas. Uh, I know of three buildings built by him, you know, in the same spirit, so to speak, showing a clear uh, pessimism. You know, this, this is, uh, this is uh, I would say, very unusual. Well, you know, behind this uh, falling facade, is a rather conventional sports uh, building. But, uh, you know, this, you, especially for a, such a program, you wouldn't expect this kind of, uh, you know, uh, pessimistic architectural statement, because it is pessimistic. Uh, um, so, Yes, it, 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 it must have been that he was and probably still is an incredible negotiator because to convince people to pay for something like this, I imagine is not easy, was not easy and will not be easy, but he made it and, and, and you didn't yet see everything. Now the building is, seems to be abandoned or deserted. It might be that, uh, that uh, not uplifting elevation contributed to it uh, uh, being, um, you know, abandoned, deserted. But, but uh, maybe there is something wrong with me. I think that uh, the unusualness of this building should, should have made the people uh, take care of it. And uh, who knows, maybe it will happen. Now look at something else. No, actually, I, sh I show three, but here I, I'm not sure if I have more than one image. It's a casino, new municipality seat in casino. The new municipality seat, meaning uh, it's a governmental building from 1980, 1990. And uh, uh, look what he built on top of that building. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's again incredible in a way that that this was, uh, uh, you know, accepted uh, by the authorities and even paid for. This this period in uh, in Massimiliano Fuxa's uh, work uh, is, I think, uh, worth um, worth studying and um, you know reflecting on. Now. This is a, another interesting work from that uh, time, Il Cimitero Nuovo di Civita Castellana. It's a cemetery, but it's a cemetery which, um, uh, which is um, uh, very unconventional um, to say the least. Unfortunately, I'm not sure I have here the, the, the best pictures I was planning to add new pictures, but I didn't do it and now I regret. I don't know if you see very well, there are pieces of furniture there hanging precariously, you know, above this void. It's literally, this cemetery is a, is a, is a, is a, is a dark, um, you know, reflection or meditation on uh, the end of life on uh, afterlife. Uh, this one also seems to be, you know, kind of uh, deserted. 
or maybe it is used like this you know and it's uh, it's uh, uh, you know uh, defaced um, aesthetics uh, uh, maybe are part of what what the buildings are and it's possible look at this railway which is part of the cemetery which ends uh, hitting a blank wall another commentary uh, without too much uplifting overtones about the end of life you know this is this is uh, again an architect who doesn't have too many illusions uh, and um, i had i saw pictures and i don't know why i didn't include them uh, because uh, you know it's it's really uh, some kind of a stage design of despair Maybe he's working with the Giorgio de Chirico had a certain influence on him conceiving these works. Here, you know, from afar, with, without seeing the so-called details, maybe, you know, you are not so um, alarmed or intrigued. Uh, but I have seen, uh, and I, again, I don't know why I don't have those pictures. Uh, I should have had, I think I couldn't find the pictures with a good enough resolution but even if we neglect the so-called details the hanging uh, pieces of furniture you know which show you know the despair of uh, dismantling existence or life even without that this is an architecture of, uh, of uh, not much optimism i mean yes we have these columns here but uh, what is above the columns uh, is a rather sarcastic um, comment on, on, on the less than divine comedy. If we are to refer to another Italian who died 701 years ago by malaria, that is Dante Alighieri. Uh, you see here, you see this piece of furniture. Now, I don't know if this was part of the project, so to speak, but who would, who would otherwise, you know, uh, place this thing here, you know, plus it's, a, you know, uh, quite elevated from the earth. I imagine it was part of the project like this, you know. So again, very unusual, it's stage design. It's stage design, but it's incorporated into architecture. Look at this look at those drawers open you know it's 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 look at this chair here you know this chair was placed intentionally here so who would do something like this in a cemetery and this is almost like looking from underneath into an apartment a deserted abandoned said apartment A most unusual cemetery built by Massimiliano Fuxas. Again, I, 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 I in a way, I, I, more than in a way, I admire those people who paid for this. Now we we go to a cave, the Neo cave, where he did some interventions at the entrance of the cave. And here it is what he did. These are earlier works by Massimiliano Fuxas. At that time, I don't think he worked with Doriana. Um, and uh, even here, I think, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is the contrast between the stone, the rocks of the, of the cave and the metal of the architect. And uh, I think he is a man of, of, of uh, great disposition towards conflict. And, you know, his father was Lithuanian and his mother, you know, half Austrian, half French. Already there are the, you know, conflicting uh, forces. Who knows what else? Uh, but it's interesting, you know, this uh, rather than, I mean, this is not a sweet entrance into a cave. Well, caves themselves, you know, do not really invite very easily the word sweet or sweetness, but here the roughness of what a cave is and the roughness of, uh, of the human intervention 
is uh, you know amplified and the contrast between the human gesture and uh, you know nature's gesture if we if i am to call it gesture is uh, for all to see <clears throat> essentially we have three uh, you know uh, domains so to speak which coexist here the green of the of, of 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 the plants then the grayness of the rocks and then the rusted iron of the work of man i think it's a good work uh, and um, you know it's certainly more uh, engaging and more interesting than the entrance into the uh, cave of uh, saint andrew in uh, romania uh, now nardini research center and auditorium this is a, a newer work and it's, it shows his disposition towards uh, uh, you know uh, so-called futuristic architecture uh, almost, um, you know, uh, otherworldly or science fiction. Uh, here it is, you know, uh, it's, 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 uh, this building is destined for uh, some kind of a research. It's a laboratory for the wine industry and the wine uh, still uh, holds an important uh, place in um, human affairs. Uh, getting intoxicated seems to be a preoccupation of many. Uh, the buildings are interesting. You know, they, uh, Gan is the, the pessimism that we saw in his early practice. And here we have, uh, you know, the courage to um, uh, conceive and build some kind of an architectural intoxication, if I am to call it so. It's the, you know, the surrealism of abstraction surrounded by nature, by trees, by grass, and by the sky. Um, I think it's a good work. Now, does the wine industry deserve something like this? I'm not so sure about this. You know, I, I, I wish this building was built for uh, some, uh, you know, cultural adventures or intellectual adventures or artistic adventures, but maybe I think in a narrow way. Uh, I don't know. I mean, do we need such, uh, you know, uh, in a way, uplifting architecture, uh, you know, which celebrates, you know, the making of wine. Of course, wineries are uh, very potent financially, and uh, many buildings built by even important architects belong to this um, program, this function. But it's still uh, a little bit disappointing that uh, our uh, aspiration for, uh, you know, science fiction, so to speak, uh, architecture uh, is, uh, is uh, you know, dedicated to, um, you know, uh, in a way, advertising, uh, you know, the manipulations of grapes uh, with the aim of uh, we know what, <laughs> to get drunk, <laughs> to put it in a blunt way. Anyway, um, so in a way, we, we are dealing here with two intoxications, the intoxicate, intoxication of uh, uh, alcohol, although wine doesn't have a lot of alcohol, but it depends how much you drink and the intoxication of a futuristic uh, vision. A lot of glass, of course. Um, what can we do? The, 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 the fascination with glass seems to still be with us. Even now, when uh, we talk about sustainability, probably many architects still flirt with the seductions of glass. That is with the illusions of, um, you know, uh, unobstructed uh, transparency. Although, as uh, Jean Nouvel said, um, you know, total uh, transparency is obscene. Now, maybe it's not obscene here in for this particular program, but it is something about, uh, you know, total transparency, which I think is uh, dubious. Uh, fortunately, he has these spirals of the structure of the, the upper part of the building. 
which uh, he continues to explore in other works later, and we are going to see them. Here are the engineers of intoxication, if I am to call them so, you know, dressed in white, you know, the specialists, the, you know, the lab man, you know. <laughs> I don't know, it's something about it which makes me smile, if not laugh. But the building is not bad. Uh, it's not bad and uh, yes, it was done by this gentleman, Massimiliano Fuxas, who is today 78 years old. In a few days, Bernard Chumi will, will also become 78 uh, years old. I maybe I will invite him to participate at our meeting, although maybe not. I don't know. I, I'm sure he has other things to do. But I thought this year to also talk about his father, because Bernard Jumi had a father who actually died on the birthday of his son when he was 18, I think. And he was himself a very good architect. So I'm thinking to talk about both on the 25th of January this month, this year. Anyway, uh, back to Massimiliano Fuxas. Now some drawings, sorry, uh, I left the, the, the word in Romanian, some drawings, if we are to call them drawings, but in a way they are. I mentioned the, the violence of, uh, of, of his uh, initial impulse towards, you know, uh, conceiving um, uh, an architectural project. And actually this was done not too long ago for a very important large building in, uh, in Rome. Now look at that redness. And I wonder how many architects and how many students of architecture uh, would, uh, would imagine uh, starting a project in this way. I don't think too many. But I'm glad Massimiliano Fuxas did and does. What does re that redness represent? It represents emotion. It represents turbulent emotion. It represents everything that is suppressed in most of our lives because we suppress the violence of such emotions, especially in architecture. But this man was able actually to build this building I, that that um, you know uh, turbulence in red didn't remain red, but um, at least obliquely and symbolically, it retained some of the uh, the movement, the dynamic qualities of what we see here. Uh, what I see here is actually a tension. Well, it's more than a tension. It's a conflict. It's war between reason and unreason. This redness is the tumultuousness of what we call unreason. And the prismatic uh, thing around is, uh, you know, the work of, of the brain, uh, the work of reason. This is the work of the heart, of the instinct, of the darker, so-called darker parts of, of, of the human psychology, but this, this is important and unfortunately very often we neglect it because it's dangerous indeed it is dangerous it is in a way a monster uh, so uh, this monster could uh, devour the whole uh, construction uh, apollonian uh, uh, mainly of the of the intellect here again we see a sketch of uh, massimiliano fuxas uh, pointing in that direction, you know, uh, uh, and I, I think we should value an architect like him and a few others like him who have the courage to externalize uh, uh, and to address emotion in their buildings. Because most of the time architects are afraid to do this. Now, Tbilisi, we, we are going to see that building built a little later on. Now we go to the Tbilisi Public Service Hall. You know, again, this is a building which might have been built even by uh, his friend in that picture, Toyo Ito, uh, but it was built by Massimiliano Fuxas in Tbilisi. And uh, here again, we see the dichotomic relationship between two modes of 
architectural expression and maybe even two modes of being in the world. We see the prisms and we see the roof, the roof being the sum of um, curvatures uh, uh, that uh, seem to contradict what is underneath. Uh, and conflict, I think, if it is assumed honestly and uh, courageously and with skill, could be uh, very fruitful for, for any kind of creation, particularly artistic creation. Maybe the scientist uh, does not uh, have to deal with such, uh, uh, with such uh, dualities. But uh, the architect, uh, I think, would gain from it. So this is in Tbilisi. Here again, we see, as I mentioned, the two worlds, the world of so-called unreason or feeling or emotion uh, is um, illustrated by the roof, by, by these things with, uh, which are rather capricious in form, in shape, uh, but, but they, they exist in life and in anyone actually and i think it's a good thing to to express them instead of repressing them now it's true they are white whitish they are you know it, it's still there is some kind of uh, unmarriage i mean it, it, a bit the roofing but but this is this is very common in most architecture where the roof is a reality almost by itself and it could be done in this way or some other way because these buildings that he made here they could have had a you know a flat ending at the top but he chose to 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 bring these umbrellas above the building and i think he chose correctly or maybe the word correct shouldn't be employed in this case uh, nevertheless, I don't think it's a building that uh, uh, that uh, deserves uh, lack of recognition. And you know, something similar to an extent is done when was done by other architects more recently. You know, they you could even say that there are some uh, possible connections between this building and what uh, Jean Nouvel built, you know, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, uh, there are other architects, of course, even the Toyo Ito, as I mentioned. Now, the music theater and exhibition hall in Tbilisi, a very different kind of work uh, and uh, equally interesting, if not more interesting. So it, again, it's a music theater and exhibition hall in Rike, Rike Park in Tbilisi. Look at the building here at the top and look at the buildings built imagined, conceived by Massimiliano Fuxas. Those who, uh, you know, advocate, uh, you know, reticence and so-called respecting the context and all the rest would be puzzled because here it's obviously totally ignoring, you know, the, the so-called context of the previous buildings or existing buildings. But, this building shows again a conflictual relationship with a, you know, with a hill, with nature in a way. Uh, it's uh, I personally like it. You know, it's it's engaging, it's uh, dramatic, it's uh, inviting. And shouldn't architecture at least sometimes be like this? I think it should. Not everything here is very you know, unusual or, uh, you know, even sophisticated. He has some uh, signature elements, you know, like you see here the, the, the top part of this, um, 
building. Uh, he often does this, but uh, uh, you know, I think he's done skillfully. Uh, skillfully. Uh, if I have any trouble with this, uh, is this this rather officious, uh, you know, style, you know, which I understand. Even here is a conflict be between how he conceived and built this stair and uh, you know the sinuousness of the structural elements of the roof. Um, this is a little bit uh, too conveniently, in my opinion, but I understand he worked with contrasts. So this this actually could have uh, could have been placed in front of a building, the one uh, the one on top, you know, like here. So you know the, this kind of stair is, uh, in my opinion, a little bit uh, uh, predictable and um, officious, as I call it, but. Uh, it's not a big uh, perhaps 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 i don't know in this picture i think it can be seen even better what i was trying to allude to and nevertheless it's an interesting thing and uh, you know he built it it's not just that he drew it he he built it so this man who fought a lot and probably still does, because I imagine to building such building to build such buildings, you do have to fight. You have to fight for your ideas, for what you believe in. You can't just you know uh, let uh, be let yourself be crushed by uh, opposition or by what other people think. No, you have to fight, and he does fight apparently, and he succeeded. I like the park though, this uh, deconstructivist park. I don't know if he designed it. Maybe he designed the bridge too. But the park shows uh, some of the disarray in a way uh, and uh, the, the anxiety even of uh, his early works. It's almost uh, Daniel Lipskin like a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, we are dealing here with an interesting architect who experiments. Too bad that in his later works, uh, maybe because the buildings are too big and too, you know, uh, there are probably forces there that uh, uh, can be too experimental with, I don't know. Uh, uh, globalist architecture, that's Massimiliano Fuxas, uh, uh, you know, uh, assumed in his later years. But this, uh, this works in Tbilisi are interesting. I said it and I say it and I will say it. Architecture is, uh, is worth, uh, you know, practicing if it is an adventure. Now, of course, not not every program and not every architecture can be equally adventurous, but it depends what you want, uh, what you understand by adventure. For example, this, uh, this today, Arch Daily published uh, an article on uh, social housing. And uh, because I like to react to what uh, Arch Daily uh, publicizes, uh, I said, perhaps we should all live in social housing. And, uh, uh, you know, social housing could be engaging and adventurous too, you know, uh, 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 not just aesthetically, but also ethically. Anyway, if we look at this sketch, we see again a man, uh, as I mentioned earlier, probably visited at least sometimes by some demons. This is not the sketch of someone who is uh, quite at peace with himself. And I actually, I like this about Massimiliano Fuxas. You know, he shows, he shows his emotions. And uh, I think the more we do it, the better. Now, maybe between the building and the sketch, there is a distance, but uh, this is almost unavoidable. Of course, from that sketch, which had um, 
temper and they had color and, and these uh, renderings, uh, there is a distance, at least chromatically speaking. But otherwise, the, you know, the, the way the volumes are, uh, you know, constituted, uh, the, you know, the, the curves, you know, the, I, I can't really talk about fluidity, but this, uh, you know, uh, curved uh, uh, parts of the buildings are expressing uh, something that relates in a way to theater because that's what the building is. You are going to see a very contorted uh, staircase uh, in uh, an Armani store that he built. Now we arrive at, um, um, at, at the building whose uh, sketches, preliminary sketches we already looked at, the New Rome EUR, EUR Convention Center. So it's in the EUR part of, uh, of Rome, that um, new city that Mussolini wanted to build. And here it is, you remember the sketch, you know, the preliminary sketch, almost painting because of that, uh, you know, uh, redness at the center. Well, the redness is not red any longer, but the, the, the forms generated by the, by the metallic structure, uh, they exist. And uh, so emotion is uh, represented in this way. Um, I, I like the way he, uh, you know, he, he uh, uses this metallic structure and how he um, uh, veils this whole part of the building, which is the core of the building, is just in the center of the building with this membrane. I don't know what material he used for this enclosure, but um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's good. You see the the carcass of the building is uh, Cartesian, is a box, and not built uh, without skill. There is skill there too, but inside is that uh, uh, you know uh, more fragile in a way, more uh, agitated core that uh, creates a balance to the rationalistic uh, box. You see, it's. Well, it's the white monster within. The, the monster within is probably not white, but uh, he made it white, but because of the, especially at night, when you see the structure from the outside through the quasi-transparency of the membrane that encloses that core of the building, I still see it as some kind of a symbol of what I call the id of architecture referring to Sigmund Freud's uh, id, meaning the, you know, the lower strata of our uh, psyche, you know, that, that part that most of the time we hide. I, I think it's good, you know, even conceptually speaking, that he shows the duality of, 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 uh, of, of human life and the duality of the human uh, personality. We have unreason framed by reason. But, but the unreason at the core is still uh, to be seen through the glass walls of the enclosure. Here you see, here is the monster. Well, I call it a monster with using a, a poetical license, if I am to call it so. Um, he does this, he does this in other works and we are going to see it. So there are two systems in a way. One is uh, strict, is rational, is rationalistic. And the other one is uh, rather free, contorted, tormented and tormenting. Maybe, I mean, may, I mean this is a large, uh, you know, important uh, convention center, is a public building, maybe, maybe if he would have truly built it as he wanted, <clears throat> He would have brought some uh, color in too. I don't know, but we saw the we saw the initial sketch. But the color is uh, referred to even without itself, meaning even without color. It's the the color of passion, 
which is uh, you know symbolized visually through the contortions of the structure the metallic structure you can see clearly this is one system here and this is another system an unsystematic system if i am to call it still a system Another sketch by uh, Massimiliano Fuxias, the colors change, but it's still about conflict because we see blueness here and we see yellowness here and yellow and blue uh, almost opposite in the, in the circle of colors. It's a courageous, uh, architecture to an extent considering that this is a public building where one would think why should we express conflict and tension and the dynamics of the dichotomy between two systems of being in the world and two systems of uh, thinking uh, but uh, the truth is you know it's a convention hall it's a, it's a place of negotiations of discussions and negotiations and discussions in order to take place uh, need to acknowledge the other. So there is always, you know, at least potentially conflict. It's a debate. And uh, debate and debating is, uh, I think, uh, metaphorically uh, expressed and architecturally through the, you know, this, the so called unusualness of the of the of the inner um, of the core of this building as we see it what is good and even surprising is that he actually built it it's not just you know a fantasy a dream no it was built Now, is this a sustainable building? Probably not. And when he built it some years ago, maybe sustainability was not a great concern. But, you know, I don't think repressing emotions is in itself a sustainable uh, enterprise, you know. So, okay, some price has to be paid for expressing such emotions. And maybe the price is not a low one, but I think it is important to express emotions. Now, I like sometimes to show pictures uh, as they, uh, you know, they uh, they land, so to speak, on my PowerPoint presentations. Uh, and uh, I like even to start uh, looking at the at the at the figures that I am. Uh, uh, displaying in my presentation from the bottom, from their shoes. Now, who do you think is Massimiliano Fuxas here? Who do you think Doriana is? Maybe it's not so difficult. I think I already mentioned that she's always elegant. Of course, this is Doriana. And uh, less, maybe perhaps with an of course, is the, um, uh, you know, the comfortable pair of shoes, of sneakers actually, that uh, Massimiliano wears. In the center, I think this uh, gentleman is an important uh, fashion designer, but uh, unfortunately not sufficiently important for me to know his name and I, I apologize. And maybe this is his wife. Let's look at them. Here they are. Um, yeah. Well, you know, this pair, Doriana, and uh, and uh, Massimiliano, they uh, you know they are part of uh, elite uh, society, and uh, you know they are often invited uh, to all kinds of events. Here they are. 
And here are again the, the sneakers of Monsieur Massimiliano Puxas. Why not? I imagine they are very comfortable. Although, you know, uh, I'm a little bit tired of seeing everybody wearing them. Now, a shopping mall in Frankfurt built by them. A shopping mall is a shopping mall. What can we do? You know, you, you, I don't think you can make a shopping mall look like a cathedral or a church. It's a shopping mall. It's a commercial thing. And, uh, you know, they built it accordingly. Uh, we still see some of his, uh, you know, signature uh, offerings to the god of uh, architecture. Although this so-called signature uh, is not only partially so, because many other architects employ, uh, you know, this kind of structure uh, with, um, you know, uh, less good or uh, you know, uh, equally good uh, outcomes. It's a large um, uh, shopping mall for that uh, terminal of human activity as Rem Kolhas called shopping. And uh, they are a little bit frightening when you think about it, you know. They, is it all there is to life to shop until you drop <laughs> dead, you know? Or as Barbara Kruger said, I shop, therefore I am. Is it why we are on this earth to just shop and shop and shop again? But, uh, you know, uh, capitalists cannot do without production and production cannot be without consumption. So the more you shop is the more you consume, and then you need the production to replace the bought items on the shelves. But it's something uh, you know, tiring and even boring about this obsession with shopping, you know, finding grati gratification in, in possessing, that is in to have, you know, I shop, therefore I am. Why don't we say for a change, I feel, therefore I am. But it's easier to fool yourself that you are happy by shopping and shopping and shopping. And look at the, the immense effort made for these um, you know, temples of shopping. They are immense uh, enterprises and uh, the architect is serving this. What can you do? I mean, this, if you look at this, this could, this could have been an opera building. This could have been a, you know, uh, I don't know, any other kind of building. Right? It's a shopping mall, you know, for God's sake. You know, let's, let's not uh, dramatize it too much. But this building, the new church in Foligno, I like. I really like. It's a cube. I often express, uh, you know, uh, uh, distancing from cubes, but for this church, and you'll understand why uh, I like the cube. And the cube itself has a, you know, it, it is an absolute, it is a pure, uh, you know, uh, solid. Uh, so by, by itself, the presence so, so obvious of the square and of the cube makes reference to some kind of absolute, which a chair should do. Uh, some people expressed uh, in the comments, uh, um, you know, reservation or doubts about the playfulness of this world, of these windows. Why? There is capriciousness, the disorder of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, freedom in a way that punctuates the cube. But what is interesting is the presence of two cubes, actually a cube inside another cube. And I think this is very interesting. Uh, um, let's see, you see here, it's, it's uh, and I wonder what you feel when you, when you enter the building and then you go uh, towards the center uh, maybe this is a, not a, it's not very high because you see it has, it has almost the same height as, uh, as the door. So 
I wonder, you know, I, 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 I feel like speculating uh, in a philosophical way, if I am to say so, by, by this uh, doubleness, you know, the presence of a cube inside the cube. I hope I have section here, let's see. Yeah, you see here, you know, why did he do this? Why did they do this? You know, uh, it's like you have a, a building inside the building a building within a building. Uh, and uh, you see here the, the human silhouettes. Uh, the last time I presented this work, I think I, I was more inspired than I am now commenting on this. All in all, I think it's a, it's, 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 it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, building for a program where you wouldn't expect really this, you know, the presence of such an abstract uh, a cube here you see even better perhaps the the doubleness of the of, of, of the whole building which is actually a building within a building um, maybe i'm thinking when you when you enter in the in the in the core building so to speak at this threshold you feel something i imagine that when you go underneath this wall um I don't know. I, I feel the empty to interpret it as some kind of a, not a warning, but uh, you know, uh, yes, it, it's kind of attention. Pay attention. You are entering into a different uh, uh, zone. You know, so um, between the exterior and the, the true interior of the building, there is this interstitial space which is um, acting as a, you know, uh, not an anticipation or a premonition, but uh, it's, it's really like, a, like an entrance hallway to, towards what you want to arrive at. Uh, but here, because this is hanging from the ceiling, from the, from the roof, from the top part of the building, uh, it is suspended. You see, it's not supported by columns. And um, it, it does have a meaning. I'm not sure I approximate it properly, its meaning now, but I invite to reflection and I invite myself to reflection. It's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting uh, and unusual actually church. I never saw this kind of um, church, modern or otherwise, where you have a building within a building. Probably this is uh, this is um, stirring up uh, within the participant, the one who sits here, who you know, a, a feeling of belonging to some kind of a, another domain, another reality, another zone, but not separated brutally from the from from the rest. It's it's a good building in my opinion, and, and, and I like it. Uh, yeah, and the playfulness of the windows uh, do not bother me at all. So this building, in a way, after seeing the shopping mall in Frankfurt, uh, is, uh, it does come as a surprise, I think.
I hope you were able to read what is written on this um, on this uh, on this page. Now we move uh, to another, you know, more detailed, so to speak, section. And here, perhaps you can see better, and I can see better, the you know the. I hate to use this word concept, the concept of the project, but I use it uh, today. Although I, most of the time, I'm, I'm an adversary of the word concept, together with uh, Bruno Taut, who wrote quite uh, humorously and sarcastically against the beloved word, because architects love the word concept, uh, but uh, I think we do not question it sufficiently. Strangely, even a singer uh, like Tina Turner uh, loved it because I've heard her using the word concept, and so does Ram Kolhas, and so the, do many, I mean, countless architects. But the concept, the word concept is uh, problematic because when you conceive life and the, and the building, you conceive it through more than a so-called concept. A concept is a brain product is a child of the brain, is not a child of the heart. With the heart, you don't conceptualize. But uh, anyway, this is another discussion, the structural focus um, of the church. Maybe I'm thinking now when I look at this section, maybe there is a certain level of threat here, you know, particularly when you when you move from either the inside towards the outside and from the well this interstitial space towards the inside, going underneath these uh, walls, you know, massive as they are, uh, suspended from the top. Maybe maybe there is some kind of a thing uh, inviting to fear God, maybe. I don't know, I didn't uh, experience the building uh, except through these images and drawings. Now the Giorgio Armani store on Fifth Avenue in New York City, as I mentioned, uh, they are friends, uh, Doriana and Massimiliano with uh, Giorgio. And here it is, you know, the, the you know, the, yeah, the agitated uh, voluptuousness of the, uh, of, the, of the staircase built with efforts, but uh, it, it pays. It, it is a sculptural element uh, that probably would have stirred up uh, the imagination and maybe even the envy of uh, Borromini and Bernini. It's possible, I don't know. Too bad that I like more pictures of the construction process because now with the, with the uh, spoiled, uh, you know, uh, finished uh, work, some of the viscerality of the, uh, process of building the, the staircase is gone. Uh, and that I think is a loss. But uh, otherwise, uh, if we look in this, uh, you know, uh, large uh, store built by the influential and, uh, you know, very uh, uh, potent financially, uh, Giorgio Armani, uh, the stair is, uh, you know, uh, inviting to, uh, you know, uh, curiosity and interest. But I hope I have here pictures with showing how it was built. Look, like here, you know, if we are to be Piranesian, if we, if we love some drama of the interior of our buildings, let's do it further, you know. I, I, I would have liked something of this to, to see how, how the staircase was built. But it's possible that it might, this might have irritated the, you know, the, the one who commissioned. Uh, I don't know. I mean, high-end fashion is something I do not comprehend. I cannot comprehend how you can pay 2,000 euros for a belt. I can't. Um, but, uh, you know, there are some people who I imagine have no problem with this. 
I, I like the making of the staircase more than what it arrived at in the end. It's more visceral. It's, um, you know, it's uh, even unfinished is, uh, I think, more dramatic and more real somehow. It's, it's the real monster. Now, the Emporio Armani store in Hong Kong, he built this too, also with an agitating uh, uh, thing uh, uh, at the center, in the, at the core. You know, these sinuous red uh, things, you know, floating uh, within the space. This is something that uh, we saw uh, Massimiliano Fuxas is fond of. It's the knot. It's actually the unknown, the knot. The knot symbolizes the unknown. And that's what we look at here at the center. It's the knot, just like in the previous store for that money that um, we looked at. Otherwise, uh, outside of the so-called knot, reddish in this case, uh, is a splendid uh, space uh, that provokes a lot of headache, no doubt, to those who have to man maintain it so pristine, you know, so glittering. My God, my God, I wouldn't like to be the cleaning person for this space. Uh, you know, uh, in a way it's almost perverse because, uh, you know, uh, this uh, bloody uh, sinuousness is, uh, is in contradiction with uh, this, uh, you know, uh, glittering uh, uh, splendor, you know, uh, anyway. The attempt is the same, to have the, the unreason manifest itself at the core of a building which otherwise is, uh, you know, uh, almost predictable and rational and, uh, you know, mundane, very mundane. Well, the redness at the center is also mundane, but because of the violence of red of the color and the sinuousness, you could imagine that uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, rebelling and uh, against what is mundane. I don't know what this is. We saw it in the plan. Anyway, now the Shenzhen International Airport, Terminal Three, China, the former country of Mao. You know, the communist, the former communist country. I wonder what Mao thinks now, wherever he is, contemplating the disfiguring, uh, decadent uh, experiments influenced by the West in his former country. You know, uh, he probably is not at peace with himself. He probably is asked, what is going on? You know, what happened to the Red Revolution? What are these decadent Westerners doing to my country? Why, why are they doing this? Why is country now the number one country in the world economically? Anyway, look at this huge building built by Massimiliano Fuxas in Shenzhen. Now, of course, uh, Zaha Hadid architects built a, an even bigger one in uh, Beijing. And who knows uh, how the next airport will be like, although the pandemic is kind of telling us to abstain a little bit, at least for a while, from so much traveling. It's not a bad building, you know, it's, it's, it's a skillfully done building. Uh, and uh, again, I wouldn't like to be the person who cleans the floor of this huge airport. You know, this is probably more difficult to, to put in order than, uh, you know, uh, working on the, the Zen gardens of Kyoto, trying to, you know, reestablish the magnificent, uh, although modest, um, you know, uh, traces of, of, uh, of sand uh, on, the, on the ground. Uh, to build an airport is probably not so difficult. I mean, it is difficult to build the airport, but to conceive it, essentially, if you have a structure that works and you are good at manipulating large spaces, uh, it's very possible that making a chair is more difficult than making an airport. I'm paraphrasing Miss, who said 
making a chair is more difficult than making a skyscraper. It's probably uh, kind of the same thing. With a good engineer, you can make, uh, and with a so-called uh, clear or good uh, concept, you can build a, an airport, sure. All the money in the world are there. I don't think uh, there are limits. Uh, yeah, it's a good building. Uh, it's a good building, but I am still a little bit troubled by the celestial uh, uh, flooring, which is so, uh, you know, I would be intimidated to step on it. I would rather step on the ceiling, but that is not possible. Anyway, Shenzhen, we don't see too many people. It's as if these pictures were taken after the pandemic, but no, they were not taken after the pandemic. Now the Milan Trade Fair, another giant building. Uh, see it here, my God, my God. I mean, this, this man is building, is building. Although this presentation will end showing his office, which is uh, kind of in a different spirit. But this, we are dealing here with mega structures, mega buildings. The bigger, the better. Did I use the word trade? Yes, of course. It's all about trade. What is trade? It's selling and buying. It's all about that. This is a manner. It's many architects employ it. You know, uh, what is this? Some kind of a um, obsession with the black hole or some kind of a you know, sucking forces that uh, point towards the earth. Maybe the pessimism of the architect is, um, you know, insinuating itself here. Maybe otherwise structure as we had seen, glass as we had seen, huge surfaces going forever and ever and ever. Why? Because we can, because there is the money. You know, uh, the merchants of this world can do it. But in essence, it's the same thing. It's about uh, selling and buying, shopping, the terminal of human activity. It's not a church here, although it could have been. And uh, people outside, the jeunesse sur l'herbe, nice, in Milan. All this glass, of course, is far from being sustainable. You know, uh, it's, Wherever we have much, uh, a lot of surfaces of glass, we can be sure that there are great losses of energy. But, you know, trade uh, uh, places like this one uh, or fairs, they can afford to ignore. Uh, of course, this is the exterior, but uh, look at here. Yeah? So glass and glass and glass and glass again. I'm tired of so much glass, I confess. On the other hand, this could have been indeed a sacred space, sorry for the word, which in this case is probably to use it sacrilegious, would be sacrilegious. What do you mean a sacred space inside a, you know, a trading, uh, uh, you know, uh, complex of buildings? Anyway. Moving forward, it's not, I'm not impressed by this and I'm not impressed by the function of the building. It's all celebrating shopping, shopping and shopping again and trading, trading, uh, merchandising the world to death, really. But capitalists cannot live without. Now Eindhoven, the, the Admirant entrance building, it's uh, this thing here. Um, I don't know. I mean, yes, it could be this way. It could have been another way. It's this way. Yeah, it's it's. We can welcome it because it's uh, you know a uh, touch of newness. It's it's new, but it's not so new because we see here the the this these surfaces. We saw them in the previous work and in some other works. Personally, I liked more a little bit his very first works very disturbing and problematic as they were. Here, he came to terms with the world and with success. Maybe there are a few touches of uh, archigram uh, uh, mentality, a little bit, a little bit, but uh, more commercial and more uh, uh, convenient. 
anyway, I don't insist on it. It's almost like the, you know, a fragment of a giant, giant, giant plane. Uh, the, the forefront, the head of a giant, giant, giant flying machine. Otherwise, the structure is kind of, uh, we have seen in Tbilisi too, and uh, in some other works in Milan. Um, yeah, skillfully done, but not uh, very impressively. And I end this uh, presentation, which could have been more ample because I don't show the latest uh, works which disappointed me because of their bigness and, uh, you know, celebrating, uh, in my opinion, a, a questionable globalism. But I'll show pictures of their own studio in Rome, not in Paris and not in Shenzhen, but in Rome. You know, <laughs> welcome to reality. Uh, we see here the mold uh, on the walls. And I like this fact. Of course, uh, Massimiliano Fuxas and Doriana could have, uh, you know, embellished uh, the staircase and would have renovated the building, but they chose not to. And I think they chose wisely. Here it is, Fuxas, twice written uh, with big letters and small letters, and of course, red. They had to be red on their beloved glass. It's something very theatrical. Now you almost think that this is a, you know, some kind of a room, a space within a theater, uh, and uh, rather, rather unusual, I would say. But um, why not? And we see we see models and uh, drawings and all the rest. Uh, I think it's a pleasant, probably a pleasant. Uh, studio and then we see you know uh, the graphic turbulences that we are familiar with already uh, you know incised on the or or he drew or they drew directly on glass that is possible too and, and it's possible also that this is the last image of this presentation with a view from the courtyard of the offices in rome of massimiliano fuxas and his wife doriana fuxas that is uh, Studio Fuxas. Thank you.